take many unexpected forms. Here was death at the end of a telescope, watching two men as they prepared to dive in an area where divers seldom went. The divers were very excited. They had come across something startling just as their air was running out. And now they were returning to explore it further. They thought it was a secret, but it was a secret that they shared unknowingly with someone determined to keep that secret for himself. was the wreckage of a large yacht. It could be the Sea Wind, one of the most luxurious yachts ever built. If it was, they had made a tremendous discovery. For the Sea Wind had gone down in a violent storm without a trace before her disabled radio could even give her position. The yacht's owner was Mrs. Bradley Reese, one of the world's richest women. She was on the ship when it sank. With her was part of her magnificent collection of jewels, worth many millions. The discovery of the sea wind would be front page news around the globe. said nothing to anyone. Now they would learn whether it was the sea wind or not. They had found the sea wind, but at the same time, they had found more than they had ever bargained for. On the surface, a visitor had come to their boat, a deadly visitor, with a clever plan for destroying the lives of those who interfered with him. When they reached the surface, they were weary from the strain of their long dive. They didn't realize it then, but there was little chance for them to survive. They were miles from shore, and their boat was gone. They weren't experienced swimmers. The water was bitter cold, the tide was strong, and it was against them. Their strength lasted for a few hours. The stronger ones still kept struggling. Then he too succumbed. Bodies were found that would look like accidental drowning, except to the suspicious eye of my good friend, Captain Greg Evans. Well, that's about the size of it, Mike. I think it's murder. See, one of these fellows was overheard saying something about finding a sunken yacht. Now, of course, that doesn't mean anything in itself, but when you put it together with these, Boy, oh boy. Belonged to Mrs. Bradley Reese? The heiress, huh? Went down on the sea wind. They went down on the yacht with her. That was Mrs. Reese's favorite. Probably right on her finger when she died. I suppose you've checked them for saltwater traces. Oh, sure. Lab says positive. Point is, Mike, these have been turning up in pawn shops all over town. There's only one logical conclusion. Someone's located the wreck of the sea wind. Using it for a private treasure chest. 
looting it bit by bit. And apparently he didn't want to share his private treasure chest with the two unfortunate divers that stumbled onto it, so he killed them, huh? That's my theory. Well, if he's been pawning this stuff all over like this, you must have a pretty good description of the guy. Oh, sure, we have descriptions, plenty of them. He's using disguises. Well, how do you know it's the same fella? Well, we think he made one slip. What was that? What? Uh, the slip. You said he made a slip. Oh. Well, it seems that every time he collected on one of these, he pulled out the same money clip. Had a very distinctive design. Uh, we haven't been able to pinpoint the description, but it's supposed to look like a claw or a foot or something. Ah. Uh. Ask him if, if it looks like that. Swim fin, huh? Yeah. See, it could be. It's uh, something new in the way of uh, jewelry for skin divers. You don't see many of them, but there are a few. Listen, Mike. You're the guy I need to help me on this case. How about it? <laughs> yeah, sure, but uh, where do we begin? Here's the file. You read it. And maybe you can tell me. Okay? Okay, Captain. Thanks, boy. Nice seeing you, Greg. file told me very little, but it did report the last place the divers had been seen alive. That was at a supply shop on the end of the Rogers Point Pier. They had stopped there to fill their air tanks. The shop owner had done his best to be helpful to Captain Evans and the authorities. His name was Lewis Martin. Mr. Martin? Mr. Lou Martin? Ah, I do. Well, that's one use for an air tank. Ever try to clean a bait tank on a hot day? It helps. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm Mike Nelson. Did uh, Captain Evans... Oh, yes. Captain Evans called, said you were coming out. Said I was to give you every possible assistance. Well, I'll need it. I want to take a boat out in the direction that you last saw them heading. Uh, it was out towards, uh, what's the name of that reef? Barclay Reef. Yeah. Is that it right out there? Yeah. Hey, you mind if I use your binoculars? Not at all. Go ahead. It is. Thanks. Oh, yeah. I want to take a look at that bottom out there, too. That boat's still missing. Give me something to look for. Maybe their tanks, too. I'd like to find out if they had any air left, but whatever happened to them happened. Say, so, is there any place around here where I can uh, run a boat? No, oh, I'll take you out. Wouldn't hear of it any other way. Well, that's nice of you. My pleasure, Mr. Nelson. My pleasure. We dropped anchor over Barclay Reef and prepared to dive. soon proved that he was an excellent diver and a good companion. He went out of his way to be helpful. Even so, we found nothing. We were swimming for hours, but the search was fruitless. All we located was several jettisoned oil drums. It wasn't likely that a small boat or a yacht had dropped them. When you're stuck that way, the best you can do is keep pushing and hope for a break. And that break wasn't far away, even though I didn't know just then what kind of a break it would prove to be.
I had gone to 120 feet. Then I realized that Lou was in trouble. He kept holding his ears and pointing to them. He appeared to be in terrible pain. He started up and I followed right after him. Happen here much? <laughs> Maybe you try to force it. You know, you should wait at it level and let your ears kind of get used to it. No. Just couldn't clear them, huh? Every time I go below a hundred feet, I have trouble equalizing. I have some tablets in my pants pocket. Would you give them to me, please? Your headache? Yeah. Use the pants? Yeah. This is what you want? Yeah. As I reached into his pocket, I found something else. A money clip in the shape of a swim fin. One like it had been carried by the man pawning the jewelry from the sea wind. I could be just across the deck from the very man that I've been looking for all along. The man who had already killed two people to keep the secret of his private underwater graveyard. Next morning, Greg and I had another meeting in Marineland of the Pacific. Yeah, it all checks out. He's our man, all right. You mean because you found the money clip on him? Well, that's one reason. But another one is the fact that he can't go below 100 feet. What's that got to do with it? The continental shelf drops off very suddenly along here. It goes real deep, except for two areas. And that's less than 100 feet deep, both those areas. This one up here, and the one down here. So? Well, we've covered this area completely. I know every foot of it. But down here, he's avoided. He's kept me, kept me away from it. Carter's Ledge. Why? Because that's where the wreck of the sea wind lies. I'd be willing to, to bet anything. Oh, you, you feel that the sea wind can't be down over 100 feet? Oh, because he can't dive over 100 feet. Exactly. That's still not enough against... I mean, that's not enough that we can give to a jury. That's right. You can't just pick him up on suspicion. And he's not going to admit anything, that's for sure. Because he's found a way to kill that's airtight. Sure. Just lets his victims drown all by themselves. No violence, no evidence. If he were to kill somebody again, He'd use the same method again, wouldn't he? I mean, it's safe, it works. Probably. Why, right, what are you thinking about? We're gonna have to set him up again, if we're gonna knock him over. Our scheme was very elaborate and seemed foolproof. Greg stationed himself at the telescope, carrying a walkie-talkie. This gave him continuous contact with an amphibian ready for a quick takeoff. Lou had hardly batted an eye when I first suggested going to Carter's Ledge. I thought that he'd try to talk me out of it but he didn't. He merely said that in that type of water, no diver should be without a partner, and that he'd make the dive with me. I told him that I could never thank him enough. Each of us carried a diving knife, of course. I was prepared to move quickly if he drifted just behind me. He was getting further and further ahead of me, and I let him. He put on quite a show of surprise when he reached the yacht. Suddenly, Lou was no longer in sight. Perhaps he had already deserted me. A few feet away was an open cabin door.
I moved through the door cautiously, just in case that Lou was there. He wasn't. been a stateroom. A broken frame and some shreds of rotten canvas were on the wall. This could be all that was left of one of the paintings in Mrs. Reese's priceless collection of art. There was no connecting door. I turned to go back, and as I did, the door behind me closed. It wasn't the current. I could hear Lou on the other side, sealing it tight. I had dropped my guard for just a moment, staring at that ruined painting, and that was all that he needed. I was locked in the cabin of a yacht 90 feet below the surface, and half my air was already gone. Even if they captured Lou, it'd be too late to help me. Examine the lock very carefully. The sea hadn't weakened it. I tried to pick the lock with my knife and got nowhere. Mrs. Reese had spent a fortune on her yacht. Everything in it was solidly built. to PG-2. You can take off now. I lit a flare and tried to burn off the hinges. I tried to force the hinge with my knife. The point broke off. I had to find another avenue of escape. There was a small inside porthole on the rear bulkhead leading to a corridor. It seemed large enough for me to slip through, but not my air tanks. And if I tried to make the surface from that depth without air, I was certain to drown or die of the bends. This had to be the only answer. I removed my air tanks. And squeezed through the portal. It was a very tight squeeze. If I got stuck in any way and held, I was done. I finally made it. With my lungs bursting, I swam around the corridor 
to pry the cabin door open and recover my air tanks. It was lucky for me that my would-be murderer hadn't removed the fire axe, my only weapon. I was on the verge of blacking out when I reached my air tanks. I hoped that the amphibian would be waiting when I reached the surface. It was waiting. lost no time in picking me up. We reached the pier just in time to intercept Lou. put up a desperate fight. It was a fight for his life. I lost my hood, but I got my man. I'll be here in a minute. You realize that you had a fortune in the palm of your hand? A legitimate one? Legitimate fortune? Who are you kidding? Nobody, it's true. You had a perfectly legal salvage claim on that yacht. A big percentage of it belonged to you. Now you've got nothing. Two men dead. Three. Hi there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is certainly a lot of fun, and it's full of adventure. See some more of it again next week, huh? When there'll be another excursion into that fabulous underwater world of Sea Hunt. <laughs>